Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the optimization technique. Today we will discuss the next method on the unconstrained optimization problem called as the golden section search method. Myself, Dr. Gurt, working in the School of Mathematics, Stapper Institute, India. So what is the content of that is, uh, uh, the brief content is that we will firstly discuss about what is the golden section rule, how it differs from the Fibonacci series method and how they can de derive them. Later on we will see what is the golden section number and then we will discuss the three simple steps rule and explain with the help of the four numerical examples. So first of all what is the golden section search? So this is the method, this is the section rule or this is the method which is uh, method which is used to reduce the intervals locating at the minimum or maximum. What is the meaning of that? If I say this is my initial searching area left and right and if I know this is my optimal point are there and this golden section method will reduce this interval from this to this. Now this will be the new R. After that it will reduce to this, reduce to this and so on until you will get uh, closer to this optimal solution. Is there. So that's the basic principle of that. So golden section is a technique to find either the maximum or minimum of the strictly unimodal function. What is a unimodal function is a function whose has either a maximum has or either has only one maximum or minimum in the particular interval of the a b like say if i say this is my interval r there so you can see in this particular interval a to b there is only one maximum r there also you can say if my function is like this way so in this case there is a one maximum among this and one minimum among that so these are the unimodal functions are so the golden ratio it is also called as the golden section golden mean divine or the, it is generally denoted as a capital phi is exist when what is the definition then when you have some line and if you divide this into the two portion a and b such that the low, larger part a divided by the smaller part is nothing but my a plus b upon a that is if you divide this length upon the smaller length is nothing but my total length divided by a if this equation will satisfied then that is called as the golden section or golden ratio and when you solve them it will give you here we will see in the next couple of slides are there how you can drive how it is different from the Fibonacci are there that's very simple in the Fibonacci method what we have seen is that the ratio of the interval is not const is not a constant that is my fn minus 2 upon fn as the n is changes so this Fibonacci ratio are changes also the number of the sub intervals that is you you need the n the value of the n uh, before solving before uh, finding the maximum or minimum by using Fibonacci method while in this golden section the ratio is a constant why because we see in the last slide that this number is a always be a constant and the number of the in intervals are taken as a infinite and definitely once it's infinite you may fix in advance also like n is 6 n is 7 and so on but it here it must be a finite value but it, in this case it must it, it can be a infinite also so what is the notation we use I, I use in the golden section is if you have any intervals L R R, you your target is to find x1 and x2 we will see how you can find them so the interval corresponding to the upper that is L and R I denoted as I K uh, K is my kth equation and I is my length of these that is the interval and on the left hand side left of the x point I call as the L that is the left of length of the left part and this portion is called as my length of the right part so now uh, our target is to find the value of the x1 and x2 so assume that this is my kth equation assume that my k plus 1 equation whatever the k plus 1 equation this x1 will move toward the right hand side so what i can do is i can move this uh, i can uh, delete this since this one is moved toward the right so this one will move toward the right so i have deleted this portion so now this is my x1 i can assume this portion is move up to here so what is the meaning of that this is the original length now the this is my new length now in this case this is now my l this is now my r this is now my new x1 at the point k plus 1 and x2 will shift it towards in this side called as the x2 plus 1 so this length i denoted as the this is the complete length i k plus 1 i denoted as here this is called as the this is the left and this is the x1 so i k plus 1 of the left and so on also if you want to move this x2 on the uh, right left hand side like this figure is here look at that this one so what is that if i assume this portion will move toward here so definitely this will move here so i can delete this portion from this one like here now this is my r 
this is my now r and this will move toward the right hand side like this way so this is my x2 on the you can see i can move this portion toward this side so uh, this now i can delete this is move toward here so uh, we will see how, what is the algorithm behind that so now here is my x2 k plus 1 and x1 is here now how you define them you can see the length of this is my x1 in this case so this is nothing but my left and the x1 this is my x k plus 1 and k plus k plus 2 and k plus 2 are here and the complete figure is now this one so you can see the original length is my i k another one is i k plus 1 another one is i k plus 2 now you can see the length are decreases and another one is say now my here and then so on so on so on now how you can choose the x1 and x2 so what is the rule behind that you have to choose uh, the x1 and x2 according to these three points are there so that is called as the golden section criteria the first one is whatever the x1 and x2 you have chosen so the length of this and the length of this are always the same for all k second is only one point you need to compute either you can compute the x1 or x2 the other point can be computed automatically like say as we know that the length of this and this are same what is the meaning of that that is x1 minus l is same as that of r minus x this is my length so if if you know the value of the x2 you can easily compute the x1 so what is the meaning of that if you replace if you move x2 on the left hand side then you have to compute the x2 value from the here and if you move x1 on the right hand side that is x1 on the right hand side then you have to compute the value of the x1 for here such that this length ik of this one is same for all we will see in the couple of the numerical examples for you. and this ratio that is a if you divide them it is called as the constant and c is called as the golden section ratio now since ik is nothing but here so what is you can do that if i divided both side by ik plus 1 2 so you can see what is that this is nothing but my c and how you can write that if you multiply and divide this with the help of ik plus 1 and ik plus 1 so what is that ik upon ik plus 1 is nothing but c this is also the c so it is nothing but my c square plus 1 so can you solve them and you will get the required expression as here now since c is my length so length can't be negative so therefore now c is my 1.618 and this is called as the golden ratio r there so you can see the number c is called as the golden section ratio now once you are finding the value of c here and you know uh, l the, what is the length of this is x1 minus l what is the length of this is r minus x2 so can you write this from here these are the same this one now here xk and ik at say so you can substitute the value of here so ik is my r minus l ik plus that is that is for the next interval so next interval i, I assume that for here so that is x2 now this is my next one is my l this is x1 this is here and r so this is my ik plus 1 and so on so if you simply think about the first two expression can you find the value of the x2 from here yes you can easily find that so this is the rule this is the way you can compute the value of the x2 once you know the value of x2 you can find the value of x1 from here now uh, what is the three step rule are there so we will discuss the three steps rule are there so in order to define them if you have some value of the n that's good otherwise there is a need of the tolerance error so firstly you have to set the l as whatever the interval you have taken this is my l r is my right hand side so you have to repeat this step until you will get the required number of the tasks what are the step number two you have to compute the value of the x2 firstly from this l whatever the interval you have taken plus 0.618 of the r minus l and x1 you can compute from here and then you have to check whether f of x1 what is the f of x1 is whatever whenever you want to see maximize or minimize the function so if you want is to minimize the function like say my task is to minimization so if f of x1 is less than of the f of x2 like here this is my r this is my x2 this is my x1 so my task is to minimize this that is i want to fix this one so i can delete this so i can move this towards here that is x2 is nothing but my x1 so you can see x2 i can move on this one x1 is here and so on similarly i we can that is we can preserve the value of the l and update the r so on the other hand if my here we can update the r and then uh, preserve the r and update the l 
So right now, it's a, uh, you may think about that it's a very difficult to understand, but we will see in a couple of the examples out there. The examples are very simple. We will discuss the four examples that will well understand the methods out there. So first of all, look at this. Uh, firstly, you have to check whether it's a unimodal or not. So you have to take minus 15 plus 15. So the graph will be look like said. So you can see the minimum always occurring at some near point here. There is only one minimum. So that's uh, my unimodal function. So what is your task is that since n is given to be 7, so now you have to move these 7 steps out there. You have to always draw this figure. What is the L is? 15 minus 5, sorry. R is my 15. So this is my minus 5 and 15. Now in order to find x1 and x2, you always try to firstly find the x2. How you find the value of the x2 is by using this tool. L plus 0.618 of this. L is my minus 5 and so on. How you find the value of the x1? So since we know that x1 plus x2 is nothing but L plus R, you know the value of L, R and x2. So can you find this value of the here? That is this plus this L plus R minus x2 is nothing but my x1. So that is this plus this minus of this here. Now once you are finding the value of the x1 and x2, you can calculate the f of x1 like here. 2.64 square, it will give you here and this. What is the last column represent that? My task is to minimize them. So which one is the minimum? L or R? I call as this is for the x1 is for the left, x2 is for the right. Because x1 is corresponding to the L, x2 is corresponding to the right. Which one is the minimum is? Because my task is minimum, so this is a minimum value so I can preserve as a L that is since problem is minimization so identify minimum occurs at the L or R now what is that it's a L so I can I can take L value as such you can say L value as such now I can update the value of the R R L. so it means I can preserve the value of the L so I can delete this portion once you will delete this portion the new figure will be here now this will be L this will be R it means x2 so whatever the value of the x2 it will moves toward the x1 now once you will get the value of the l and r either you can compute the value by using this again but there is no need of them so once x2 will move here x1 can be moved over the this one and once x1 here so the corresponding value of the x1 will also be here now how you can find the value of this is again l plus r minus of x2 you can see this is l plus r minus so now you have computed this new value so you can compute this value as f of x1 again you can see which one is minimum again l is minimum so i can preserve the again l value i can preserve the again l value r value i can taken from here and x1 value i can taken to the you can see i can taken to be here and i how i can find the value of x2 i can take the previous value of the x1 over the here and the corresponding value of this is here now you can find the value of again x1 from this one so what is that x l plus r minus of this and once you will get this value you can compute this f of x1 you will see which one is the minimum is r now in this case r is the minimum so you can preserve the value of the r here i can preserve the value of the r now how you can find the value of the l so you can take now for the value of the x1 you can see in for preserving the l we can take the x2 value now in this case we can take here now since x1 will move toward this so x2 can be moved toward the x1 so what you can analyze that x1 and x2 can be swapped to each other so x2 will move here so f of x2 will move toward the here now how you can find this value is now again using the rule of l plus r now this time is x1 given to you so you can calculate the value as here l plus l plus r minus of this once you are finding this you can compute this value and then check which one is the minimum so since this is minimum so l is minimum so this value is my 0.028 is fixed you can see this is my fix now how you find the x2 value so this is taken from the x2 this value here and this value can be moved toward this side if x1 will move here the value of the x1 will also move toward here so and how you find this value is l plus r minus of x2 so you can see you can compute this value now this is the r so you can preserve this r value in the sixth situation this value is nothing but my minus 0 0.96 this value will move here and x2 will move toward the x1 so you can see this value i can preserve this value i have moved toward the x1 this value i have moved toward this and if you move this value so this value is also moved toward here 
you can compute this value as l plus r minus of x1 similarly you can compute the last step sir now since i need the seven equations are there so i can stop this equation now what is the optimal answer are there so optimal answers are always be in the final intervals and the value of the x is can computed as the take the mean of this so once you will get this you can substitute this value as of here that is 0.06 square that is the required answer. so look at the second example so that it will clear more to you now you can see that the value of the n is not given to you but the interval of the uncertainty is given that is epsilon is given to be 3 so it means now there is a, a number of the steps are not given so i have to move until this condition will satisfy so what is that this is my lower limit l l so what is the, what is the epsilon is there basically epsilon is nothing but my r minus l what is that is a 1 1 is not less than of the point 3 it means i need to calculate the step number 2 also now how you compute the value of the x2 so l plus 0.618 of the r minus l once you know the value of the r2 can you find the value of the x1 yes you can easily find that l plus r minus x2 once you know the value of the x1 and x2 you can substitute the value here x1 x2 you will get the value of the x1 and x2 so now since my task is to minimize them which one is the minimum is this is a minimum so r is preserved so now for the step 2 i can preserve the value of r once i preserve the value of r it means there is a need to update the value of the l so l it means x1 can be moved toward the here once x1 will be moved here so what is the value of x2 so x2 will move toward here you can see that x2 will move here and the corresponding f of x1 will move here now how you find this value of this you can easily find that l plus r minus x1 so you can see that if x1 is given to you you can find the value of the x2 easily if x2 is given to you you can find the value of the x1 easily now once you will find the value of the x2 you can find the value of the f of x2 by substituting here you will get this value again you can see which one is the minimum is since it's a negative so r is minimum so i can preserve again r now can you say me what is the value of this is yes it's my x1 now x1 is moved toward here so what is the value of this is here so you can see that x1 will move toward i can okay i can move on that so this value will move here 0.764 now x1 will move here the corresponding fx1 will also move toward the x1 so you can see this value will move here this value will move here and f of x2 will move on the f of x1 and you can calculate this value from by using here now you can also see whether the length of this what is the length of this 1 minus 6 here is it point is it less than of the point 3 no you can easily calculate that this is 3 point something are there so this is not be there so we can compute the equation number 4 also you can see that 1 minus 0.382 it is not be less than of the point 3 so you have to compute the length number 4 as it now since it's l so i can preserve the value of l r can be up uh, sorry uh, x2 can be updated on the r x2 can be x2 is updated on the r x1 is moving on here and so on now whether we can move on the five steps what is the length of this is 0.854 minus 0.618 what is that this is it is a point two something are there is it less than of 0.3 yes so i can stop here now since the length of this is 0.236 so it is always be less than of this so you can stop here also in, in in the examination you can check the answer at each of the equations like we know that in the golden section rule this equation will satisfy that so what is that uh, if i say one what is the length of this is my one what is the length of this is if you subtract them it will be my eight one and six point eight one six if you subtract them what is the length of this is my 2, 8 and 3. This is my length. Now you can say ik is ik plus 1 and ik plus 2. So you can see that the length of this is nothing but plus this plus this are here. Similarly, if you want to find the length of this, you can see or you can observe that this is nothing but this plus this are here. So that is the here. So once your step will be stopped here, you can see the length, the final interval lies in this here and the error maximum error will lies in between them and the final answer is my average of look at the another example is there now you can see this is a maximization minimum minimum or the maximum now these are two functions are there 
so what you can do is you can firstly draw the graph of the x square this is my graph of the x square you can draw the graph of the 1 minus x by 2 so 1 x when x is 0 it's my half when x is minus 1 it will be my 0 or 2 and so on so this is the graph now you want the maximum so what is the maximum of them is you can see the graph of this one is my maximum and is it the unimodal function so since my target is to find the minimum so you can see in this upside portion this one how many this is the minimum point are there so that's only one minimum so it's a unimodal so how you can define this function are there you can see on this line up to this point that is my x is half whenever x is less than of the half the function is by this straight line that is 1 minus x by 2 and whenever x is more than of the half the graph is my this curve that is y is equal to x square so here now my target is to minimize this function over here now in this case the length is i6 that is my i have to perform the 6 equation and the interval is my minus 1 to plus 1 are there so what i can do is here again you can find the value of the x2 from this one once you will find the x2 you can find the value of x1 compute now you can how you compute them it's a minus of this which one satisfied here so i can substitute the value of this so it will give you this value so you will get this answer and since this answer is again satisfied this you can substitute here so you can see this uh, I, I, my target is to minimize so which one is the minimum is r so i can preserve the r i can move x1 over here and I, how you can x1 over here so x2 can be moved over this side so once you know the l r and x1 you can find this value of the x2 by using this formula so you can move them okay so once you will getting this value so i i can calculate this value here and you can calculate this here so based on them again which one is the minimum is r is the minimum so i can again preserve r i can move this point two three six on here x2 over the x1 once you are moving the x2 over here the corresponding x2 value f of x2 will also be here you will get this answer r here now in this case you can see the l values and so on so now you can complete complete this table you will get the required now since there are the six equation required so the final answer lies here you will get this as the final answer you can also see the minimum by graph you can see the minimum occurs at the value of the 0.5 which is near to that. if you want to move further then you will get the more appropriate answers look at the last example again you have to perform the six situation the functions are my there you what you can do is you have to start from the l r you can compute this value by using the rule of this and you can find this value as l plus r of minus x2 and once you are seeing this is my r you can preserve the value of the r here and you can put this value of this x2 can be updated on here the corresponding value of the x2 is also be updated here now you can find this value easily and you can move all these six steps you can do it yourself you will get this the required table and once you will get complete the table the final answer will lies in between them you will get the required answer and if you solve them simply you will get the minimum answer is here x is a minimum here now you can see there is not the exact answer but if you increase the equations you will get the more accurate answers so this is the way you can solve this golden section rules are there and we will see in the next class how you can uh, construct the matlab code of this if you want to find the more um, uh, videos on the non-linear programming you can see there are the fibonacci series matlab code of the fibonacci series triples descent conjugate grid and hook gifts and many more are there of the channel name dr harish Gar. playlist is a non-linear optimization till then all you can find these videos in my this channel link dr harish Kirk. best of luck students happy learning